All right. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, L. Harris is acting a little bit shady in a lot of these interviews. Now, I've spoken about her in the past, and I've told y'all that I feel like she has hands-on insight with what happened. I feel like she is a part of the situation that happened within the party, within the rooms. I do feel like she has some input on that. I feel like she was jealous of her baby sister. I really do. And she goes on, you know, like that was her backbone and that's where she got her strength from and this and that and the other. But Elle Harris isn't acting like someone that just lost their backbone. As well as I feel about Teresa, I feel about her. I've never seen her shed a tear. I've never seen her really just get out of character and show true emotions of someone that just lost a loved one. Because, I mean, it comes a breaking point. It really does. And, I mean, you're reliving this as in Teresa and L. Harris and, you know, those that are close to Kanika. They're reliving this every day. Because since the 10th. Social media has not let this rest. So every day they're reliving this. So at this point, I mean, you still telling me that you're still doing all of this and you have not broke down yet. I'm not believing this. I see disgust and I see anger in Teresa's face. But when that comes about is when she's talking about the hotel and the police. It And it feels like she's only mad because her end of the bargain wasn't fulfilled. Like she didn't get what she was told was coming to her or something. But as far as L. Harris... She's sitting here playing with her hair. She's in her phone. She's just staring off into space. She looks like she's high as hell. So I don't know if she's being controlled or she's just self-medicated. But I do feel like she's there as part of being Teresa's handler. Because like I said, when Teresa messed up and said things she wasn't supposed to say, L. Harris would cut her eyes at her, and then she would look directly at the camera every time. And you could tell. And then it was like Teresa just got caught up in the moment, and L. Harris was, you know, like not having it. She sat up and, you know, tried to get directly in her face, you know. But she mumbled some things from time to time, like twice. One was when they were talking about the camera, and the other one when they were talking about the pictures. And Teresa didn't even have that right because she was saying four pictures, but the fifth picture. And, I mean, it was just so much, which I will get into on another video. But I just want to point out the shadiness that L. Harris is still kicking off. You know, and people... Want to try to tell me, you know, I'm just making stuff up and I'm reaching. No, this just does not seem like a sister that just lost their baby sister a month ago. Going on two. And then reliving this every day. And still have no answers. No, nah, this is not how this is supposed to go. Unless you have the answers. Because when certain things are said, you know, she she's looking like kind of remorseful, kind of guilty like, you know. But I'm just not feeling this girl. And I've said this before, she's just not my cup of tea. And I do feel like she has something to do with it, and I do feel like she knows exactly what happened. I feel like she knows what happened even after the kids basically ditched her and the hotel staff took over. I feel like she know in great details what happened to her little sister. I feel like Teresa knows and I feel like parentheses Lamont knows and of course everybody in their party knows. They know, you know, they just don't want us to know for whatever the case may be. Whether it's organ trafficking, whether it's witness protection, whether it's a cover-up for the murder. Because the murder could have been accidental. And I've said before, I don't feel like, 
you know, the kids intended to kill her, but I do feel like they intended to bring fuckery to her life. Um, as far as the hotel, I do feel like the outcome of that was just that because that's not the first time these staff members have done things like that. And I've told y'all in another video that when I researched this hotel, numerous of deaths and murders had popped up. And that is one thing that Teresa did say in this interview that I will touch on on another video coming up after this is that the um, police and the hotel managers, you know, they were saying that out of all the deaths and murders that happened at that hotel, she's the first one that involved a lawyer. Like I told you, these people are paying these people off and telling them, you know, blunt force trauma. And that's a wrap. You know, they've accepted whatever they gave them. And if it hadn't have been for social media, this situation probably wouldn't evolved as much as it did. You know, which is bringing heat down on what the hell is really going on in this hotel. We do know there's prostitution. We do know there's organ trafficking in the area. We do know that there's a lot of demonic and satanic stuff going on around the city of Rosemont. And, and there's a lot of corrupt people there too. But this young lady here, she knows something and and I'm going to say this, I do feel like even though they may have been a part of the first part of the shenanigans, but once the hotel got into uh, the picture, I do feel like they might have been threatened. And the reason why is because they, they want them to shut up. You know, they want them to call it quits. Like in this interview, um, you know, she said the man just wanted her to say, hey, she saw her walk in the freezer. But, you know, I'm going to get into more details about some of the other things that were discussed in this interview and as well as some other interviews. But I really just wanted y'all to check out this shady situation that L. Harris is putting out here. I feel like that is baby. No tea, no shade. I'm going to let y'all go, my good people. And... Get down in the comments. Tell me what y'all think about her behavior. Tell me what y'all think about the whole situation, you know, that was talked about in the interview and how no emotions were shown. Um, let's just keep digging. But I still feel like this chick is really hands on with what happened to her baby sister. I feel like she was one of the ones trying to turn her sister out because she turned out. And I feel like she was really trying to expose her sister to the life that she's basically living. And you can come for me. You don't know these people. You're not in Chicago. No, I'm not. But some of these pictures and things on uh, Facebook and social media does speak, you know, for themselves. Because before all of this, these people still had a normal, regular life. And if you go years back, you see... Wow. You see a lot of patterns that fall from the mom to the kids. So this is generations of corruptions. And maybe Kanika really was trying to do something positive, trying to better herself. You know, and that's why I feel like jealousy came along because she didn't want to be the down little sister and sell herself for cheap at these hotel parties and stuff, you know. And now that she's 19, you know, she's of age and stuff, you know, I feel like L. Harris tried to bring her in. And this interview just really makes me feel like L. Harris further knows and further has something to do with what's going on. Because this is not, to me, this is not the activity of someone who, you know, just lost a backbone. But anyway... I didn't keep y'all longer than I expected, so y'all get down in the comments and holler back at your girl.